hello so I decided it would be fun to film a video from my web camera on my computer so that you guys are seeing me how my students are seeing me right now which is from my web camera on my computer and I did do a little bit of decorating I'm like backwards so decorating um, for Halloween I love Halloween I love um, basically September through January the 5th I celebrate hello thanks miss um, I love Halloween Thanksgiving Christmas that whole this whole time of the year is just it makes me feel so good and warm and fuzzy inside I love it so yeah I did not formally film any videos over the last two weeks I filmed my first day of school which was the 17th and then I haven't filmed since um, because I have just been really busy and a little bit stressed out so <sighs> I'm feeling a little bit better now I've caught up on some things and everything's kind of chilled out a little bit and so now I am trying to come to you guys with maybe some tips and tricks I hope I don't know they're very simple none of this is a reinventing the wheel but tips and tricks that I have kind of picked up over the last two weeks of remote online education um I will say that this is different from the spring in the spring there was very little expectation about what was happening both from admin from teachers from students like we didn't know what to expect I felt very prepared for what we did last spring this fall it's been totally different because um, you know last fall or last spring we only met 30 minutes three times a week and we couldn't give grades we gave feedback but we couldn't give grades and there was no attendance and so it was almost like really if nothing was happening then it wasn't a huge deal I always made stuff happen but you know what I'm saying like it wasn't like right now where it's basically they're calling this our new normal I hope this is not our new normal I do like some aspects of online teaching but I definitely prefer to be in the classroom in front of my students in the room collaborating and getting to talk to them so this has been challenging for sure but we've made it through two weeks and everything's gone pretty well so my tips and tricks what I have learned distance teaching the first and this is true in the classroom and online but it is especially true online because um, well you'll see set a beginning and end of class routine always have a routine and mine is the same thing every day the first thing they're supposed to do and I have a little thing that I'll remind them they have to they're supposed to log into canvas and check their email the reason is because you never know what they've gotten if they've even logged in canvas um, if they've checked their email for the day and sometimes there's information there that they need so I've gotten them in the habit of doing that I hope at least I tell them to do it and then at the end of class I always do an exit ticket and I always do it the same way there's a Google form they go and they fill it out the exit ticket is never any type of assessment on class what well, could be sometimes like what do we what did you take from today or what question do you have from today usually it's a social emotional learning question of some kind and so I do that and I don't um, I collect the you know who's done it and who didn't do it and I try to get everybody to do it it's not a grade per se it will go into their participation but it's just a nice check-in and a way for us to connect at the end of class um, and then also my attendance after everybody gets in I think at uh, maybe five minute mark I start taking attendance and I always read it out loud if I was in class I would not do that but because we're not in class I want that second to connect with each student so I read it out loud I talk to that student I'm like hey Jamal I don't have a kid named Jamal right now hey Jamal how are you doing um, and we have that little second and to me I like it um, I hope they like it I don't know but I like it the second one and this is a huge one is wait time I thought I had pretty good wait time as a teacher I have learned that I did not and your wait time is so crucial during distance learning because they're on a computer so they might not hear you correctly it's gonna take them a second to think they might be typing to you because some of them don't want to get on the microphone and so the typing is going to take them even longer you have to give wait time and it feels uncomfortable but it's not like you just have to you know just chill it's gonna be okay and if they don't get it then you can move on 
to another person or ask a follow-up question or whatever you have to do. But wait time is crucial. The next, remind students of your class norms. I took the time the first day of school to set up class norms with my kids. They made up all the rules and they were very reasonable rules. I enjoyed them and I remind them of them. I try to do it every day. The first week we definitely went over them every day. Since then, um, I'll go over them if I think we need it. It's not been too bad, but you know, like trying to go over them at least once a week or twice a week has been, could, should be very helpful for you because they're the ones who made the rules, so they should definitely be able to follow them. So coming up with those norms, making them together, and reminding them of the norms will be very helpful. I haven't had too many issues, and I think that that might be partly why. Next, simple is better. If you have a lesson that involves more than, I would say, three activities, at not even three, like for an hour, I would say by the time, normally by the time we get on, take attendance, and I kind of like gear up the class, we're almost halfway done. So I think two activities is plenty, and if you're trying to use like more than one or two different tech tools, you're gonna just give yourself a headache. It's too much, you gotta make it simple, as possible. I try to not have my kids leave Canvas very much at all. Edpuzzle luckily integrates into Canvas. They don't have to leave Canvas to use Edpuzzle. They don't have to leave Canvas to use Quizlet. They don't have to leave Canvas to use um, Flipgrid, although Flipgrid, Flipgrid did me wrong on like the second or third day of school, so I'm not using it anymore, but you know, just those things. You got to make sure that you are taking your time and um, not trying to do too much at once. Just because you've heard of a tech tool and you think it's cool doesn't mean you have to use it. I don't, I try only to use six in a semester and I try to keep them on a rotation so I don't use any one tech tool too many times and I definitely try to um, keep it simple when using those tech tools, especially because we're online and we don't have as much time together. So go along with that when you are bringing in tech tools you have to teach the kids how to use the tech tool just because they grew up with a phone in their hand doesn't mean they know how to use these tech tools they know how to scroll through instagram they know how to um, film a TikTok. they know how to snapchat they do not know how to um, fill out a padlet as a discussion board they do not know how to film a educational video and edit it together and add in subtitles and whatever. They don't know how to do that. You have to teach them how to do these things. They don't know how to create a, a, a pictograph, a, what is it called, an infographic. They don't know how to do these things. You need to teach them how to do them. And that means that you kind of need to come in with some exemplars. That's an old school trick. If you have the kids do a project, have an exemplar, you know, an example. It's definitely still true in tech. You have to teach them how to do it, provide an example, show them what you're looking for. Absolutely. Next, communication is key. Oh my gosh, I spend so much time now talking to my kids. Well, I've always talked to my kids a lot, but it feels like more now because you're talking to them through email, through text, you're talking to their parents through text and email and on the phone. You're talking to your administrators it's a lot more one-on-one -on -one. that's why it feels like it's more because it's all very one-on-one -on -one and um, very personalized to whoever you're talking about so communication is key if I have kids who've missed two classes in a row I'm calling I usually call the first time but you know when you have like okay I know when I say this number some of you guys are gonna go oh, that's not that many kids but for me it's a lot of kids I have um, like 80 kids yeah, somewhere around 80 kids. That's a lot of kids. And if I'm calling behind them every single day, that is a lot of time. So I try to, try to call, um, you know, when needed, but it's pretty quick. It, you know, you used to be, if a kid missed um, some assignments, I would call like every two weeks or so, because that's when I'm checking grades every week and a half to see how they're doing. Now it's like every couple of days I'm calling. Every time I grade, I'm calling. Um, in fact, I have a list of 27 parents 
that I contacted the, um, just in one day, the other day. And this week we've been back and forth, um, not back and forth in a bad way, but just, you know, back and forth about different issues. And um, it's just been a lot of communication, but it's necessary. It's very important because you're not with them. So you have to communicate with them. Um, and not just about, you know, behavior issues or grade issues. Also giving feedback. Feedback is a form of communication that you have with your students. And feedback is crucial right now because they are not getting as much instruction, so they need to know from you how they can improve. Feedback has been a thing that I've been working on this semester so far, and it's gotten better. Canvas has some tools that make it a lot easier. The integrated um, rubrics are amazing, and there were integrated rubrics with Google Classroom, but with Canvas's integrated rubrics, you can actually make a comment in the rubric um, for the category. And with Google Classroom, it was just a general comment. And so I like that. And then also with Canvas, you can video record your feedback or they have a talk to text feature that is very accurate. I have loved using that, it's been great. So feedback, communication, calling and emailing them and their parents. In fact, I'm about to send an email out to my kids right now in a few minutes when I get done with this, reminding them that we're having our Socratic seminar tomorrow. Um, during class. And the last thing that I would like to remind you of is grace. Show not only yourself, your students, your administrators, everybody. Everybody's needing grace, okay? So show it to, and hopefully you're receiving it. Um, I have kids who, you know, in the past, if we're in traditional face-to-face, -face, kids are missing work. I'm like, look, there's no excuses. And there wasn't as many because we were in the classroom. But now they're at home. I don't know their home life. I don't know what they're going through right now. And then with COVID and everything else going on in the world, it's just a difficult time in general for everybody's social and emotional well-being and also for their mental state. So showing grace. Um, this past week, I saw my kids were struggling to get work done. Um, and so on Friday, we had a fun day. We played a trivia game. They did an emoji story where they created a story about their week using emojis. And then for the last 30 minutes, they were catching up on work that they had not completed yet, or they were redoing work based off of the feedback that I had given them to increase their grade. And the kids were so appreciative of that. And I was appreciative of it too, because that meant I didn't have a lesson to prep for that day. And I didn't have extra to do for that day. It was wonderful for me, it was wonderful for the kids. We got to connect a little bit more, um, build a tighter relationship, and it was just something that we needed because this online learning thing is hard. People think it's easy, it's not easy. I do way more work now teaching um, through distance learning than I ever did teaching in the classroom. Because if you're in the classroom and something goes wrong, you have tons of ways that you can fix it. If you're teaching online and your internet goes out, there's nothing you can do to fix that. There's nothing you can do. So it's hard. Grace. Grace is my number one. It's my final because it is my most important thing. Remember to give yourself grace. Give your kids grace. Give their parents grace. Give other teachers grace. Give your admin grace. Everybody needs some grace. And with that, I will bid you adieu. It is Sunday, so I have some things I need to do to get ready for my week. And I hope I vlog this week. We'll see if I vlog. But yeah, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you later. Bye.